Hi, I'm Neil Hermes and welcome to my weekly bird wrap where I have three great stories. I have a story about the western grass wren and it being reintroduced to Dirk Hartog Island, a story about a 67 million year old bird fossil and the last story about the beautiful Chatham Islands robin. Hi, I'm Neil Hermes and welcome to my weekly bird wrap. I'm going to straight to my first story about the western grass wren. Now the western grass wren is a small uh, wren-like bird that inhabits uh, heathy areas in dry, arid parts of central and western Australia. It used to occur from about Port Lincoln and um, the Eyre Peninsula right through to the western Australian coast. In large areas it's become extinct uh, and small populations have hung on. Now in western Australia there's an island, Dirk Hardog Island, where the birds weren't once occurred and they have now been reintroduced to that island as a sort of arc to potentially save the species from the impacts that are still extant on the mainland. Now, Dirk Hartog Island is interesting because the Western Australian government are, going, are doing a program which is called Back to 1616, which is to reproduce on that island as much as they can the fauna that occurred there when the first Dutch explored that part of the coast back in 1616. And so the grey grass, the western grass wren rather, is one of those species that's being added back to the island. So that's a great part of the progress of that reintroduction story that they're doing in WA uh, as we speak. My second story today is about fossil uh, birds. Now, you, you, if you follow my YouTube channel, you know I rather like stories about dinosaurs and dinosaur birds. This is a dinosaur bone that was, or a bird bone that was found recently, but it was aged at 67 million years old. Now it was found in Belgium and it was a bit of bone from a bird, an ancient bird or an ancient dinosaur and it was put aside and people didn't take much notice of it. And it's only been recently that they've had another look at this uh, particular fossil and they've realised that what they have is a fossil bird which has part of the skull which shows that we have to rethink how fossil bird skulls developed. Now we know that modern birds, or most modern birds, have skulls that the top jaw can move a little. There are ancient birds like uh, emus and cassowaries and things where the top bill is fused. And we always assume that birds started with a fused bill and it evolved over time into a movable upper bill. It turns out that 67 million years ago, birds had a movable upper bill. The ancient birds did. So the evolution of a moving upper bill in birds is a recent evolution after the time when they had fixed bills, like uh, the dinosaurs used to have a fixed jaw. So we've rather turned itself, uh, turned it on its head, the story about how birds evolved their movable upper jaw. It is a very ancient feature that they had for a long time. My last story today is about the absolutely gorgeous Chatham Island Robin. Now, the Chatham Island Robin is black but it's the cutest little black robin that you ever see. Now, these birds were devastated when the first Europeans arrived in the islands around New Zealand, and they got down to about 30 individuals of this particular species. And in the end, to save the bird, they had to breed a new population from just one pair of robins. Now, this bird is now well, well established, but the concern is that the whole new population is derived from one original pair and whether or not that's caused a genetic problem for the surviving new population. What the scientists have done is they've looked at the 1800s and they've looked at the genetics of the skins that they had of birds collected back in the early part of the 1800s and compared it to the genetic profile of the birds from the 1970s and as it turns out there's almost no difference. So what it means is that the genetic profile of the birds we have today is much the same as the profile that we had before and in fact this bottleneck of two birds hasn't caused a new mutation problem for the population. Now it's probable that with island populations that often get down to small numbers that the populations are resistant to the problems that you might get uh, with genetic mutations in, in other populations of animals. In effect they've been, they've been trained to have um, bottlenecks in their genetic profile and so we shouldn't potentially have as much concern about island populations when they get down to low numbers as we might 
if the population was an animal that occurred in a continental scale. Say, for example, if we had two tigers left uh, in, a, in, a, in India, and the genetic profile of those animals may well go through a disastrous genetic uh, bottleneck. So the good news from that story is that the Chatham Island Robin's genetic profile is excellent. Uh, it's much the same as it always has been, and the prognosis for this little bird is good, at least in the genetics terms, uh, into the future. I hope you found those stories interesting this week. If you did, check out the other stories I have on my YouTube channel, check out my webpage, and I'd like you also to check out my uh, safari program. I've got a great set of tours that I'm doing in 2023. We're going to New Guinea, we're going to Vanuatu, we're going to Norfolk Island. We're doing trips around New South Wales, and I do regular trips around the ACT for a couple of hours every month showing people how to bird watch and getting into bird watching. So check out those various options. There might be something suitable for you, uh, and thanks for watching.